Hi, uh, welcome to this lecture. Uh, in this lecture, uh, we are going to uh, talk on uh, flexible magnetor array. And if you recall the last lecture, uh, I have shown it to you how the fabrication of such kind of devices um, can be done uh, using our photolithography process. So, now let us see uh, once the device is ready, how can you interface this device with electronic interfacing board and then how can you collect the data. Now, uh, I am sure that in the TA class you are shown that once the data is there right how to process the data process, process the data it is um, uh, similar to your EEG data that you acquire and then we use the Saturn board and then we uh, process this using MATLAB. Uh, we have some digital filters uh, in reality everything can be done or everything should be done on the hardware right uh, with software that can be or firmware can be there, but the software should be used mostly for the UI purposes. So, uh, but nevertheless uh, uh, we we wanted to understand uh, how the device performance is uh, and what kind of neural signals we are able to acquire. Uh, and once we, un we understand how these neural signals are acquired which are called local field potentials uh, since it is a, a signal coming from multiple or, or more than more than uh, 5 10 neurons uh, we we don't we cannot say it is an action potential and once you have these uh, signals we wanted to see whether we can uh, understand the efficacy of anti drug right so this the these starting was the ECOG device which is the electrocardiography device that can be used uh, during the surgery to understand that, that can be used uh, invasively right uh, through surgery process where clinotomy is done the device is implanted uh, the, uh, the skull is sutured back and then uh, the data is acquired to understand which area in the brain is misfiring. Again you do the craniotomy, remove the device and resect that part of the uh, brain. So, to improve the resolution right, uh, uh, we, we started for fabricating a 32 or high density microelectrode array. Now, 32 number looks very small, but like I said earlier let me reiterate that for the rats brain this number is big. So, even 32 uh, channels becomes a high density microelectrode array. And the if you see the slide the material that we used uh, for as a substrate uh, is polyamide. Uh, the uh, polyamide was coated on silicon wafer, uh, but finally the, the device is made out of uh, polyamide substrate and on polyamide substrate we have titanium and gold. Uh, once you pattern titanium gold in, in this particular fashion which is uh, here, we can again spin coat polyamide as an insulating material and then perform photolithography to etch polyamide from the recording electrodes and the contact electrodes right. So, once you do that uh, you can uh, realize the device and the device looks something like here which is figure number G. Uh, we can also look at the SEM images and from SEM images we were able to see what is the electrode size. Now, this is already we have discussed. Now, once you have the device then uh, you can use the uh, EIB which is electronic in interfacing board and um, this interfacing PCB is designed to interface with EIB to signal equation. That means that one is for interfacing with the device, second device is to use or to connect with the uh, signal acquisition system. Now, that is one thing that we can we can connect the device to the uh, EIB, but how this device will stay on the rat's head right uh, and it will not fall. So, we need to fabricate a EIB holder. Now, you may have seen or uh, if it is not uh, uh, still uh, there in the in the lecture uh, which is covered till now uh, we have a, a 3D printing laboratory experiment. Now, this 3D printing laboratory experiment will show it to you how to design uh, a 3D printing uh, casing uh, and how to print it ok. So, with the 3D printing we 
uh, were able to design a EIB holder which is a electronic interfacing board holder uh, for housing the EIB and microelectrode. Okay. So, you can see here the EIB and the microelectrode is housed within this EIB holder and now once you do that this device you can see this area okay, here that goes into the rat's brain and the remaining things with this contact pad which is right over here right this one comes out which can be connected to the EIB holder. Okay. So, uh, now this entire thing uh, will fit well on the red sprint. So, there is a hole for the screw multiple holes right. So, that uh, the, the EIB holder stays firm on the red brain or red's head. Hmm. Okay. Now, the corresponding engineering drawings are shown in figure A top view, side view, isometric view and front view uh, where B shows the exploratory view of the 3D printed EIB holder. Again like I said uh, if you have already seen the 3D printed uh, 3D printing lab uh, recording then you already know if you have not seen then you will see uh, in subsequent lectures how the 3D printing can be done when you see the recorded lab uh, videos. Now, once you have this you need to also understand that what is the impedance value of my device. Okay. So, that means that you have to take the uh, contact from 32 channels and which, which is why you can see this whole wire on this right cables. Hmm. And uh, you can then uh, see or measure the impedance uh, by doing a frequency sweep from 0 to uh, 10,000 which is your 10 kilohertz and what we found is that the frequency uh, or the average impedance value of the electrodes uh, is close to 29 kilo ohm at 1 kilohertz uh, which is similar to what we observe in the literature. Now, since it is a flexible device that right, you can see in the previous slide here that it is a flexible device correct. So, but when you flex the device and when you make it again uh, straight right is there a change in the impedance because of this flexing. Hmm? So, to do that we have we have done the banding cycle test or you can see we have performed the banding cycle test and for about 250 times we have bent the device and measured the impedance. When we did that we found that the impedance values are not significantly changing uh, when we normalize the impedance uh, values. And this uh, uh, impedance measurement was or called electrical impedance spectroscopy which is EIS. Uh, this was performed uh, after immersing the recording electrodes into a PBS of 7.4 pH. Now, uh, 7.4 pH because it is close to the uh, CSF. Uh, pH CSF stands for cerebro spinal fluid. Okay. Let us go to the next slide. Now, once you uh, have everything ready you need to now start performing the experiments on, on the red. So, there are three terms one term is and I think I have discussed this thing however, let us revisit these terms. in vivo within the body ex vivo tissue is taken out of the body and studied in vitro when the cells are grown in the laboratory okay in vivo within the body ex vivo when the tissue is taken out or the blood is taken out and you study that particular uh, bio sample is a ex vivo studies and in vitro is when you take few cells and grow the cells in the lab make a uh, uh, different kind of structures using the cells right or you can say that uh, for example, people study spheroids right. If you further understand the role of spheroids can be uh, to study the effect of the uh, immunotherapy drug or chemotherapy drug uh, into the in vitro environment which is the environment that we can have in the laboratory. The spheroids are formed using the cells and cells are loaded into the YouTube plate YouTube into YouTube 
and then uh, the spheroids the cells accumulate together to form some kind of structure like this which we call as a spheroid okay like this these spheroids are studied further for several applications my my question uh, <laughs> or the the course is not to understand about the how the cells cell culture is there or how we can use the spheroids or what is chemotherapy or what is immunotherapy and what are the T cells, what are the helper cells or killer cells or regulatory cells. The question is about in vitro. So, when I say in vitro, in vitro is growing the cells in the laboratory or start performing experiments in the laboratory with the uh, samples that are made in the laboratory. Okay. This is very easier way to for easy, easiest way that I am using to explain to most of the students who comes from different background right. So, let us not do not hold me accountable for every small definitions that I am using I am trying my best to make it as easy as possible. So, that you all understand uh, what does the term means in vivo within the body ex vivo take out the tissue and understand our cells and understand. In our case we are looking at tissue. So, is a tissue and understand and then when it is a in vitro then becomes the something in the laboratory. Hmm. So, that is what it is now if you see the uh, this particular image what you understand is that when the device is implanted onto the rat's brain the recording electrodes right the recording electrodes are in contact with the brain. Once you do that once you place it well you can put a dura back and uh, there are multiple screws that are used one is for reference one is for ground followed by uh, stuturing the brain back or the, the skull back or placing the, uh, the part of that bone which was taken out during cranidomy back on the brain of the rat and followed by the dental cement which is right over here and uh, you already have the device coming out through from the, the the remaining of the device coming out from the brain which is connected to the EIB holder through the EIB interfacing board and the connections are taken out right. So, this is the whole process um, and you will appreciate the complexity, but at the end of the day the red is alive for the time that we want to it to be alive. There are certain protocols that we need to follow uh, uh, so that the animal uh, is not discomfortable after the surgery and we have a vet with us uh, in the institute who takes care of uh, all the protocol that we have written through which we get the ethics. Okay. So, uh, we have the surgeon to do the surgery, we have the vets to understand the protocol is followed, we have proper animal facility and in fact, I will uh, I have shown to you uh, what kind of uh, operation room we have for rodent surgery uh, uh, with almost everything that you require not almost everything we have everything that you require uh, for performing the rodent experiment. Hmm. Since we, we, we are talking about rodent experiment we will stay there we also have a non human primate and uh, we will go uh, to that section may not be in this uh, particular course, but, but maybe in the next course sometime in future. Now, once you have uh, recorded the ECOG signals which is your electrocardiography signals you can see that you uh, the signals from 32 channels are acquired and uh, the baseline these are called baseline signals because these are initial signals that you obtain from the brain without uh, creating or inducing epilepsy using convolutions or uh, using the electrical stimulation on the rat's paw because both will create an epilepsy. Uh, so, here you can see that all the channels uh, are uh, showing uh, data and the y axis is about 200 micro volts uh, this is for 10 second recording that we are showing. So, that you understand and you can see channel 1 to channel 32 uh, uh, how the channels are behaving some channels are absolutely flat for example, channel number 9 in this case it shows kind of a flat line channel number 22 kind of a showing flat line right. So, uh, that happens okay, that happens and certain channels start recording certain channels will start kind of um, uh, not showing good data because the channel is uh, because the electrode is not touching uh, the brain properly. So, it requires a proper protocol and to optimize the surgery and surgical protocol as well to make sure that all the things 
uh, start showing some kind of reading. But nevertheless, we then could induce the epilepsy and when we induce the epilepsy, uh, then you can see that the uh, seizures are there because you can see now the y axis is at 3000 microvolts and suddenly you see lot of uh, activity happening in a uh, lot of electrodes uh, among 32 electrodes that are shown here. Now, these activities can be further uh, that can the, the, the question is that can we can we get back to the baseline that means can we cure this epilepsy or we can test the efficacy of anti epileptic drug AED. So, if you if you now administer once you create this uh, seizures which you can see on this particular slide and now if you want to understand how the uh, anti epileptic drug is effective or whether AED is effective or not then you can administer this AED uh, and once you administer this AED you will see that the uh, ECOG signals from all 32 channels they are close to the baseline. Now, we are back at 100 microvolts right from 3000 microvolts. Okay. So, you can see a huge difference because we have administered the AED which is anti epileptic drug. So, which is here recovered baseline after AED administration. Uh, recorded for 20 seconds. Um, uh, here even this is recorded for 20 seconds we are uh, so, so which you can see here this is 20 second this is 10 second uh, uh, just to show you the scale bar. So, uh, I, I, I think I told here also then and maybe here also that we are showing for 10 seconds in fact, this is close to 20 seconds this is just scale bar to understand. So, it is close to 20 seconds of recording. Now, Further to uh, understand how the time frequency analysis of the acquired ECC signals from the cortical surface uh, in all three conditions are there, we perform this experiment by taking the baseline data. So, you can see A1 is a recorded baseline, then we have these are all for 40 seconds, time is here, right? 40 seconds, and here is your microvolts 100 minus 100 to 100, here is minus 10 to 10 here it is minus 1800 to plus 1800 um, and then you will see that what A 1 shows is that A 1 is a recorded baseline, A 2 is a power spectrum baseline recording for duration of 20 seconds right from 10 to 30 micro uh, 30 seconds. So, it is total is 20 seconds. Um, then we have A 3 which is a uh, we have yeah A 2 is power spectrum uh, and um, this power spectrum is also for 0 to 60 hertz. Uh, frequency uh, again that is because we are using the Saturn board uh, and if you it is about 125. So, half becomes close to 60 um, uh, hertz uh, and then we uh, have A 3 which shows a spectrogram of the baseline duration of 20 seconds. So, you can see that we were able to understand how the uh, time frequency analysis for the baseline is there. Then we have performed the same experiment for the uh, recorded signals during the epileptic episodes or seizures and you can see that B 1 is according to epileptic activities after 10 minutes of bicuculin, bicuculin is a convolution that will create that will cause or it will it will help us to induce the epilepsy um, and then we have B 2 which is a power spectrum epileptic activities which is right over here uh, followed by spectrogram of the epileptic activities for duration of 20 seconds which is B 3 in this case. Then we go to C, in C we can see that the effect of AED, uh, C 1 is a baseline which is which is this one uh, and then it was the baseline was recovered after administrating the drug uh, we recorded for after 4 minutes of administration of the epileptic drug. Uh, then we have C 2 which is the power spectrum which is right over here and you can see that for every uh, 10 hertz frequency approximately 20 dB uh, fall you can see in the power spectrum. Uh, and finally, the C 3 is a spectrogram of the recovered baseline which you can see here. Okay. Further you want to understand the special analysis of the recorded epileptic activities then you can see uh, just take that episode where the seizures are there and from there we can understand that which electrodes was firing more 
uh, that means that corresponds to the electrical activity of the brain in that region the epileptic is epileptic uh, or seizures are more and from there what we will able to understand is that how the special electric electrical traces with black dotted line showing bilateral spread of uh, epileptic activities due to topical applications of bicarbonate crystals this is this particular line um, correlation results with b uh, uh, which is with this one you can see right this is like somewhere in the center it is more compared to on the sides you can see here right like here or here or here or particularly here right so what and and of course there are uh, episodes it is not like there is nothing no activity but what we have done is can we just see that uh, how the electrical traces are there uh, where the maximum activity is there and then uh, correlating that particular data uh, uh, that is the like correlating uh, the results with electrodes with dominant epileptic signatures uh, uh, which shows that correlation indicating seizure onset zone is localized in the area affected by bacterial So, the point is we drop the bacterial in the center of the brain and then we suture the uh, uh, the skull. So, the point is we were able to see that the maximum episodes were in the center of the uh, brain because the crystal diffuses from the uh, we, we put the crystal in the center of the brain and then it starts melting or diffusing. Uh, the, the, the point that I am going to make here or I am, I am making here is that with this 32 electrodes that we have we are able to capture the data from the brain of the red right and not only we are able to capture data but we can tell that where is the where is the seizures right seizure episodes or activities epileptic activities right and if you further want to understand the source localization source localization right then also you can use this kind of uh, micro electrode array so let us understand what we have seen i'll just go through all these slides very quickly so that it helps first is we are looking at the ecog so, you can use for this kind of application to understand which region is firing more. Then we saw the schematic how the device is implanted into the rat's brain and how the data is uh, acquired through the uh, cytone daisy biosensing board. Then we have seen how can we fabricate the device which is flexible micro electro array uh, and then we move to EIP which is the PCB design and fabrication of the electrode interfacing board. Uh, followed by a EIB holder that you can see in this particular slide. Uh, once you see the EIB holder uh, with, it, which, with the help of 3D printing, uh, we saw how the electrical impedance spectroscopy can be performed and what are the impedance values uh, for the electrodes. Then we show how can we uh, implant this device onto the red brain again the implantation process will be taught to you by the neurosurgeon so let us wait for um, uh, so so you you may have already seen that right how it is done um, but once but the device is there and you implant it it is what i am more interested in showing it to you once you implant the device then what we have seen we have uh, acquired the signal which is a baseline once the baseline is acquired we induce the epilepsy using bacriculin drug convolutions uh, we, and then we can see the seizures uh, activity uh, and then we have administered an anti epileptic drug to understand the whether the baseline is recovered which you can see on this particular slide followed by time frequency analysis experiments uh, and here we were able to very clearly uh, see the power spectrum analysis and the uh, spectrogram of the of the of the baseline uh, the spectrogram of the epileptic activities and the spectrogram of the recovered baseline. Uh, finally, we were able to uh, uh, do some uh, spatial analysis uh, and correlation analysis of the obtained epileptic activities. 
uh, this particular work is already published in this paper uh, which is called a flexible implantable microtry array for recording ECOG signals from rodents is in biomedical micro devices. So, if you want to further understand uh, in detail we have uh, the paper for you. So, that so my, my uh, way of uh, teaching or conducting this particular uh, lecture right uh, with this topic is to make you understand that not only uh, you are learning how to fabricate a device, but you are also kind of getting some understanding about how to utilize the device and how to acquire the signals and it is validated or it is appreciated and it is um, welcomed by the research community uh, such that we can publish it. So, the reviewers uh, have accepted the protocol, have accepted the way we have fabricated device and uh, now it is in the uh, in the public knowledge. So, this is what I wanted to show it to you that when not every uh, uh, thing that we are discussing is published, but most of the things that we are discussing is also published that the, the reason of pressing on publication is that sometimes even whatever we think the reviewers help us to improve the quality of the work right. We miss sometimes how to represent our data right or the analysis that we are doing or to add some more analysis to give the end user a more access or more understanding about the work that is performed. So, uh, is important for all the young researchers who are taking this course is not just to learn fabrication, but to understand how the uh, application of the device is there and then try to collect the data and try to publish it. Now, there are international conferences go there pu publish your work, there are journals go there and publish your work right or submit your work and of course, you cannot go to journal right, uh, but you can submit your work there and see what kind of feedback you get right and take the feedback optimistically. Um, uh, if you think that all the paper that uh, we submit from uh, IISC or even from IITs or NITs or something that you think right is is the top institutes in our country gets accepted in one go then it is not correct, it is not correct. Every researcher has to go and improve the work so that it becomes uh, uh, you know good for the journal to publish it ok. So, uh, do not do not have some kind of what you call uh, thought process uh, without or perception right without knowing the truth right. Truth always is every researcher works hard, every researcher tries to publish, every researcher gets some good feedback, major revision, rejection, minor revision and then it is accepted ok. So, uh, this work even now it is in the uh, is accepted in general it took about uh, two and half years for us to rigorously work on this particular device ok. Good thing is now we had a device and we, we could uh, teach you this particular uh, application. Now, I want to switch the gear and go to the another device which we call as a uh, biodegradable ECOG electrodes. Now, until now what we have seen is you have the ECOG device and you implant in the human's brain right, you, human brain uh, for intractable epilepsy. So, why intractable epilepsy because the that epilepsy the anti epileptic drug fails. So, the only way to treat intractable epilepsy is by resecting the area which is causing these e seizures or episodes. To understand which area is causing the seizure, we need to implant. When I say we is uh, a surgeon, needs to implant the device which we call ECOG or ECOG. Now, once you implant, fuse, open, take out, resect. What about once you implant, the device will dissolve or will absorb or dissolve bio resorbable bio resorbable. So, bioresorbable device it will get dissolved or absorbed in the brain itself ok. The question is where it goes, what materials we have to use, what are the toxicity effect right, whether after after dissolving is it toxic to other part of the of the rat's body because first we are doing in the rat no. So, we have to check the heart of the rat and the liver of the rat and the kidneys and the uh, small intestine, large intestine, lungs to see that the uh, toxicity uh, effect is not there from the materials that we have used 
for fabricating this particular device. Hmm. So, we will take this uh, as a uh, uh, separate lecture uh, since I do not want to feed you a lot of things in the same lecture. So, let us uh, wait for the next lecture and again I will cover this uh, fabrication of this device uh, and uh, the novelty that we bring in. Mm, we are not a material scientist. So, what we do is we get the literature understand what materials have been used and we fabricate this device sensors uh, and then we do the experiments to, to for certain applications right. This application also is still towards understanding the effect of anti epileptic drug but in this case now we are using bioreservable platform. So, we will see this thing in the next class till then you take care uh, and uh, if there are any questions feel free to ask us in the NPTEL forum. Thank you.